In the last lesson, we focused on routing and we set up these basic blog post pages so you can click inside here and see a very uh, poorly uh, designed blog. Now, what we're going to do in this is figure out how we can incorporate this entire design into these markdown files. You might remember that we added these in this blog folder right here. So individually here, we've got just markdown with front matter from just a normal markdown document. Now, Astro borrows the same idea and has its own front matter where you're writing JavaScript. In a sense, what it's doing when it actually grabs stuff from a markdown file, though, is it's adding each of these as props that are passed along to a layout or an Astro component. So we need to figure out how we can actually define those Astro components. Now, what we're going to do is create a blog layout in this layouts folder. You could do it anywhere. It can be any kind of Astro component. But since it is more of a layout style component, it makes sense to add it here. So I'm going to go ahead and add this, and I'm going to call this blog post layout Astro. Now, what I could do is just mimic this main layout right here. So I could grab it right here, and then I could go ahead and add it here. But then I'm duplicating a lot of work again. So you might remember last time how we nested components inside of other things. So we've got like routes that are nested essentially inside of this main layout component. Well, we can do the same thing with our blog post layouts. So in other words, we can actually use this main layout and nest everything we need for the blog layout inside of that. So here's what I mean. Let's actually just steal it from one of these index pages. Let me grab this main layout right here. Essentially, what we're going to do is the same thing we've been doing with our other routes, except we're going to use this blog post layout as the example. So I'm going to get rid of all of this here and just replace it here with the main layout. Let's go ahead and get rid of this as well. And then this main layout, we need to actually import. So I'm going to get rid of all this and come in here and say main layout. And then I'm going to get rid of all this as well. All right, so if this is my main layout, you might remember that I have a slot in the middle, and that's where all the content is going to go. And that's the same when it comes to this blog layout. So for now, I'm going to add a header tag right here. And inside here, we're going to have a, a div with the class of container. And then next to that, we're going to have an image. So we'll do all that in just a second. This will essentially be the header for our blog post pages. The rest of the content will be below this header. That will all be inside a div with a class of post content. And this is just so styling works properly the way I've set this up. And there'll be two things inside here. There'll be another div with a class of content. And this is where we'll actually have a slot in this component. So I'll explain this in a second if that doesn't make sense. But essentially, all of this is going into the slot of the main layout. And now we've got another slot, which is where the blog content will go. Next to this, eventually, we're going to have a div with the class of sidebar. And that's where we'll have a sidebar. Right now, we're not going to worry about that. But just so you know, that's where that will go. Now, the question still arises, how do we actually get the markdown files to use this layout? And then how do we actually grab stuff from the markdown files? Now, a moment ago, I mentioned how these right here are essentially just going to be props that Astro passes in to whatever layout component, whatever Astro component we give it. You can define what layout you want it to use simply with that property of layout. Now what we'll do is reference a relative path to whatever layout we want to use. In this case, I want to go up a level. That gets me to the pages level. I'll go up one more. That gets me to SRC. And I'll go into layouts. And finally, blog post layout. And once again, I need .astro. And like we've done before with these astro files, I have to add .astro. Now, when I use that, that'll actually use the content in post one here so that it uses this layout. So if I come back over here, how do I get stuff from it? Well, remember, all that front matter from my markdown file is passed as props. It's passed as one object called front matter. So if I say const, all I'm going to do is grab the front matter like this from my astro.props. Now, there's actually an interface you can grab from Astro. It'll give you a lot of the stuff that you get here. But for now, what I'm going to do is just console.log this. So you can see I've just got an extension that prints that out quickly for us. So I'm going to save this here, and we're going to come into post one. Now, already you can see it actually took on the effect of the blog. If I go back and go to post two, that's not using that layout. You'll see that did not take on that effect. So if I come over here, now that I'm here, where am I going to see this log? Think about it. Would I see it over here on the client, or am I going to see it in my server side uh, terminal. Well, because this all this stuff up here in an Astro component is server side or you know on the build, then I'd actually see it down below. And in fact, if I open up my terminal, that's exactly what I see. Now, what am I getting here? I'm getting all the front matter and other stuff. So let me show you what I've got here. So I'm getting the title, the date, the author, the image, the description, draft, category, all of that is stuff that I wrote. Then I'm also getting file, URL, and then I'm getting an Astro object. So these three down here are not things that I passed in. They're things that are provided for me by the framework itself. So we would use it very much in the same way like we'd use any props. 
that means I can take this title and pass it in right here. So I'd have to do front matter dot title. Now, just like I don't want to type aster dot props over and over again, I really don't want to type front matter dot something over and over again. So I'm going to actually kill all this and then just destructure all this from the front matter. So for now, all I want is the title, the description, the date, the category, the author, and the image. Now the description I actually want to pass along here as well. So I'm going to say description. And that reminds me, now that I have this just as title, I can just pass it in like that. And both of those will be passed to the main layout, which will then in turn be passed down to the head and eventually show in the head of my document. Now let's go ahead and save this and then fill out the rest of this content. Now inside this container, I'm going to have things like the category, the title, and then the author and date. So let's add those all one after the other. I'm going to add the category in a small tag. This is just going to be a link. And in this case, I'm going to template out with a template string here, uh, slash category, and then slash in here in a template string, I'll just say the category. I'll give this the class of badge so that it will pick up my styling. And then inside here, I'm going to have category. Now, if I save this here, you'll see it pull in right up top here. And if I were to click this, obviously I don't have this route set up yet, but if I click it, you'll see I get reference docs showing right here, and it's actually turned it into like a URL param as it needed to. Uh, I actually wanna change it a little bit so it looks more like this. And so we'll just write our own little custom function here in a second so that it looks the way I want it to. For now though, I'm gonna come just below the small tag and add an H1 tag with a class of H2. And inside here is where I'll add my title. If I save that, you see that pulls in. And then finally, I'll add a paragraph tag, and this is going to say by, and then I'll have an anchor tag. And much like we did up top, I'm gonna to go ahead and template this out. So I'll say dash author, and then once again, I'll pass in the author here, and I'll pass in the author here. In other words, I want them to be able to click on the author and get to a, an author's page with all of their posts that they've already written. Now outside the anchor link itself, I'll do a space, and then with option and eight, I'll get that little dot. And then finally, I wanna pass in the date. If I save it here, this doesn't quite look the way I'd expect it to, so we'll fix that too in just a second. First, I wanna show you what this author link looks like. If I click in here, it's done the same thing. It's created this URL scheme for me, this param and passed it in with that percentage 20 for this space. So I actually wanna customize this as well. So both of these should take the same function and it will basically slugify whatever that is. Now there may be a way to do this in Astro naturally. I didn't know if there was or not, but it's just JavaScript so we can do that ourselves. Now we do have a JavaScript folder. So if I pull this open over here, we're gonna add another file in here. We'll just call it utils.js. And to start with, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this in because it's kind of long and arduous, but basically just search for a Slugify uh, function if you want online, or you can copy this from the GitHub repo, repo. Just look at lesson number seven, that branch, and you should be able to steal this from that utils.js. What we're doing is taking text, we're then turning it to a string, lower casing it, and replacing anything we can find. So spaces get replaced with dashes, double dashes get replaced, a bunch of stuff like that. And you can see how in the end, it's gonna give me a slugified uh, text a string. Now, how do we get this in here? Well, we actually pull it in up top. So let's come in here and we'll just say like uh, utils uh, imports or something like that. Here, I'm going to import slugify from, and this is a relative path. So I'll go up a level into JS and then finally grab my utils. It means if I save this and grab this right here, I can just wrap both the author and the category in this. So it's this one right here inside the URL. I'll just say slugify and then add author in parentheses as the, the argument that I pass in. We'll do the same thing up top here. This time I will grab both of those together and first add the parentheses and then come over here and paste slugify. So if I save that and I come back over here, if I click on reference docs now, it'll actually give me this slugified URL. Same thing if I come over here, I click on that. Same thing, I get Darnell as a slugified URL. Now these are both eventually be routes like this inside of an actual page. So I'm gonna grab both of these by holding option and clicking both of those and adding a forward slash there. Now there's another helper function we need and that is to transform this date to something that looks like human readable. So we'll do that again and I'm gonna open back up this utils.js. Here, let's just custom write this one, it's not too bad. I'll say function and let's call this something like format date. I'm gonna take a date in and then I'm going to return a new date that uses my date to start with. And then I'm gonna use a method that lives on that called to locale date string. I've done some videos on this before. I love this INTL API that we have in the browser now. You could do so much cool stuff with it. What I wanna do is I wanna pass in as the first argument, the locale. Now, if this was client side, I'd probably pass this in as undefined and that way it would basically figure out how to style it based on their locale. And that may be your preference to style it in that way. 
However, since I'm just doing this on build, I'm just gonna use my locale, which is in US like this. And then you can pass it an optional options argument. And in this case, I'm gonna pass it time zone and I'll pass it UTC. That means when I use this, it'll use the actual date that's passed in here as the date, rather than subtracting my number of hours from the UTC time. So if I come, let's see, back over here, now I just have to also pull that one in. And then I'll come down here and I wanna format the date right here. So again, I'm already in a template string here, so I can just surround it like this, pass that in as an argument, and that's what we get. Now let me show you what happens if you don't pass in this optional options argument. If I remove that and hit save, you'll notice that it actually subtracts a day because I'm not in UTC time. And that's basically what it's gonna be using is my locale. Um, so it'll use the 000 for the hours, subtract my time, and so I always get the day before. So if you want it to be the day you actually write in your post, go ahead and leave it like that. Okay, so we've got two more things I wanna do. Number one, I wanna actually add the image down here. And then number two, I think I'd like to extract all of this into its own little component so that we don't have all this messing up or mucking up this uh, blog post layout. So let's start with the image itself. And to do that, I wanna show you another integration. This is for images in Astro. Now, technically this is still experimental. However, I've seen that it works really well, so I figured I would share it with you and I'm sure it will only get more stable. If I come down here, it's gonna tell you a bunch of things as far as how to install it. One of the coolest things about Astro is not only are their docs awesome, but you can also get a lot of help just from the command line tools. They'll do a lot for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and kill my server. Then I'm just gonna grab this MPX uh, Astro add image. And as I add this, it's gonna actually just walk me through the whole process. So it tells me, hey, you're gonna install this. Is that good? Sure, it's good with me. Next, it's gonna actually update my Astro config for me. Perfect, I don't like doing that kind of stuff in here. So PMPM run dev, I'm up and running. So just like that, it did all that work for me. Now let's kill it actually one more time because I wanna show you something else we need to do. In order to use some of the, the features we're gonna use, we also should install Sharp. So I'm gonna do that. This is an image library and I'll install it just like this. And then I actually have to do the manual work of updating my own Astro config since this is just an optional install. So I'm gonna open up my Astro config and you can see that I need to pass in this right here to the image right here. Now, just for a better experience from a developer standpoint, I can add types if I want to in two different places. Let's go ahead and just add it in that en.d.ts. And here, all I wanna do is replace this, as you can see, with uh, astro.js image client. So I'll save that, close that down, save that, close that down, come back over here and npm run dev, and we should be up and running. Now, why have I gone through the, the painstaking work of setting all this stuff up? I get this image and I actually get a picture component as well. Now, the reason I would wanna do this is because I can resize it. I can encode it differently if I'd like to. I can add customizations like filter or blur. I can also do a bunch of other cool stuff with that sharp library that we installed. Now, why would you wanna do that? I think some things are better shown than told. So let me show you what I've got here. I've got my image.src and my image.alt. So if I come back over here, I'll do image.src. And over here, I do image.alt. And if I save that and I come over here, I got the image coming in, but let me go ahead and open up the network tab. We'll look just at the images and then I'll refresh. And let's get a little bit more room. You can see it's 237 kilobytes, so not too bad. Now what I wanna do is replace this with a more optimized image. And I'm gonna do this with this Astro Image plugin. So if I come over here, there's a bunch of things you can pass in. An SRC is required, you can see. Same thing with an alt. You don't have to pass in a format. But anyhow, there are a bunch of different options. I'll let you kind of poke through these as you want, but let's just go ahead and just use this in real life. So I'm gonna come over this way, and the first thing I need to do is import that library component. So I'll just say like library import, and I'll grab the image and the picture. Now for now, just to keep it simple, I'm just gonna uh, import the image itself, but you may wanna use that picture element, and you're welcome to do that. Then what I'm gonna do is come down here and replace this right here with image. Now, those two things I passed in are great, but there are a couple of other things required by this image component that are not required by the normal image tag in HTML. One of those would be either a width or a height. So I'm gonna give this 1200, and then all to go for a height, we'll do 600. So you don't have to do this. These are the dimensions of the image though for all of these, so I'll just go ahead and do that. Now, I can also pass in something called a format. I mentioned that a second ago, and I can basically pass it any format I want. So I could do AVIF like this, I can do WebP, and it will just transform it on the fly for me. So for now, let's start with AVIF. So let me go ahead and save that. And immediately you see I'm down to 31.6 kilobytes immediately. Isn't that pretty cool? 
And I can come back here and say WebP. This one's 57, so maybe I stick with AVIF because it's a little bit smaller. Hey, nice, right? And you can see it's adding in all this at the end just to show that it is transforming it, and you see all the transformations right on the image itself. So a significant reduction. I don't know, five, six, seven times the reduction, and you can see how the quality is still pretty good. Now I can actually pass in additional things here. So another option I have is the fit. And in this case, I want this to be a cover. I can also pass in quality and it will actually uh, minify it for me essentially on the fly. This needs to be a number. So I'm gonna pass it in like this. I can even pass in something like an aspect ratio. So here let's do like five over two. And I can also pass along things like the class. So I'll say, I want this to have a class of hero image, which I think that just adds a little bit of like shadow on it if I remember correctly. So there we go, that's the little shadow it added, and it did all the rest of this stuff for me as well. I'm not sure if we actually lost any quality or size. Now it looks like it actually is slightly bigger. I'm not sure the reason for that, but not too much bigger, so I'm, I'm happy with that. So that's pretty amazing. Just like that with this little tiny component, I can very quickly minify my images using this. Now obviously you may want to make this a little bit more performant and add different sizes for different screens and all that, but I'll let you figure that out. For now, all I need to do is go back to all of my posts and add this exact same layout tag. I have left a blank space at the top of all these, so I'll let you do that, and I'll do the same, and then we'll be right back together. All right, there's six, five, four, three, two, and one. I'll kill all of those, and now let's move back to the blog itself, just to show that that's working for all of them. If I go to post two, now it should pull this in, and there's my image. Post three, same thing, all of these work. And you can see how all these are just dynamically being passed in. The title up here is even changing because I'm passing in that prop uh, down here to the main layout. Pretty cool how you can just use these components, start nesting them, and then even pass markdown files a layout to use when they're rendered. Now we've got just one more thing to do, and that is I actually wanna extract all of this logic out to its own component. So I'm gonna grab the header right here, all the image stuff right here. We'll grab all of this out. And we'll call this something like post header. And before I save it, let's come over this way and in our components, let's add that post header dot astro. And to start with, I'm gonna add that front matter up top and then down below, I'm gonna paste in all the stuff we just grabbed. Now, this obviously needs all of these things in here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say const, I need the category, I need the title, I need the author, I need the date, and I need the image. And all these things come from astro dot props. Now I also have some imports. You can see I've got these two JavaScript imports and then I also have the image import itself. So let me come back over here and I'll just steal those from right here. So let's get rid of this. Actually, let's grab the comment as well. And I saved it prematurely, so we're gonna have it yell at us, that's okay. Uh, let's see, I need to come out here and then down to JS so that works. The other thing I need to do is grab this library import right here. So I'll copy this out like this, come over this way and do the same thing. Now it's still gonna yell at us because post header isn't defined and then we won't have passed it any of those props yet. So let me go ahead and get rid of this and let's retype this in now that I've got that post header so that I don't have to manually type all that. Up top, if I hit enter, it should import it for me and it does, that works for me. Now I need to go ahead and pass this all the things it needs. Now there's a couple of different ways I could do this. I could just leave the front matter here and just pass the whole front matter down and do this whole dit song and dance inside that post header. Or since I've already destructured all these, I could just pass them in like this. So title, um, description, date, category, and finally image. And let's see, I guess there was one more too, right? Author. Okay, so there we go. So we've now extracted all this logic out to its own component right over here, grabbed all this stuff in, and then basically just used the same content we already had there. So here I am, all of it's working. These things are slugified. This date is prettified. Everything is working as we'd expect. And we've even minified this image here. Now I'm not gonna do this here, but maybe you wanna take this right here and apply it to the about page. That's the only other page where we've used an image, except at this point so far, we've not minified this. So see how much you might save with this image import. Now if I come over to the blog page, you'll remember that we just hard coded this here. Obviously that's not the way you're supposed to do it in Astro, but I wanted you to be able to quickly navigate to it while we were building all of this out. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to create a card component and then how to fetch all those markdown documents in the front matter of our blog page. This is where working with Astro starts to get really fun and I hope to see you there.